Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. First off, I just had to say a massive thank you for all of your love towards the palette towers and just the idea in general. 90% of them sold out within like 40 minutes, which is just insane. So thank you all so much. I know I've been like starting every studio vlog like this, but it's just crazy and I'm never gonna be able to say thank you enough. This week I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be getting up to. I've already spent a portion restocking or trying to restock the palette towers as fast as possible since they were so popular and there's such a demand for them. So I might be doing a bit more of that so if you missed out last week there should hopefully be some more in my store available right now. But there's a couple of things I maybe want to try out, test, design, play around with things, organize some stuff. So I guess we'll just see where this studio vlog takes us. So as you can see, I actually have a whole set of new palette towers here. I actually didn't bother filming any of it. I mean, I started, but when I actually painted these, it was like one in the morning and I probably should have just gone to bed and done it the next day. Uh, so things weren't exactly going well. So I decided to just stop filming and try and save the catastrophe that was going on here. So this is what these look like. I am, I think, going to put them up in my store pretty immediately. Um, so I'm not sure by the time this studio vlog goes up if any of these will still be available. Um, but yeah, I did want to show you since I normally um, show the different uh, pores that I do since they all are completely unique and I try and do a variety of different color schemes and stuff. But this is only a portion of the palettes I'm actually going to be working on this week. I also have just extra pieces and stuff everywhere. Um, I actually need to go ahead and spray all of these lids. They are pre-taped up so I'm actually going to be doing some Kuratake palettes because they've been really popular for custom orders so I decided to go ahead and start actually doing some ones for my store as well and I figured out a way that I will be able to obviously um, have them like be able to tell an obvious difference between the Kuratake ones and the just normal um, pan size palette towers, so I figured I would go ahead and do a select number of those. Some of these lids are for custom orders, but um, I just, it's the next wave, so I'm going to be doing them all at the same time. The other reason I'm trying to do a slightly larger wave of these is because I'm not going to be able to do like my apparent weekly restocks of different travel palette and palette products uh, for a little while. So like don't freak out, I'm not stopping these, it's just right now I've been in this kind of crazy cycle of literally every week I have been pour painting and resining and restocking some form of palette product, whether that's been a travel palettes, the palette towers, the palette boxes, doing custom orders, which in theory I will still be trying to to do so if anyone has been interested in a custom order or has already contacted me about those I will still be doing those but as far as the restocks go I'm going to need to cut back a little because I have some things I need to get done instead of constantly pour painting so yeah it's all really exciting stuff but I just wanted to give you a heads up that the restocking is going to be slowing down for a little while after this current wave of products really I'm just trying to catch up on some other work and actually doing more types of artwork than just pour painting painting which is pretty much all I've been able to spend my time doing as of late and there's always video concepts that I really want to do and so I'm just trying to make more time for those other than I'm actually working on trying to create a bit of a backlog for videos because I plan on not even really taking a bit of time off which I should be taking some time off but um, I have a really exciting project that I will probably be doing some video videos on and talk about later when it's closer to the time um, but I'm not going to be spending time like I want to make sure I have um, some videos to go up for when I'm working on this larger project. All really fun stuff but I'm gonna go outside and start painting these palette lids. <laughs> We are 
completely switching gears here for a second because this just finally came in the mail and I have been excited and waiting about this package for like a month now, which is like totally just, you know, the typical mail delays that are happening right now. But this is a package from Jackson's Art Supplies, which I love Jackson's, like totally not sponsored. I mean, I wish, um, but I haven't actually had a reason to order from them for a while. I mean, it used to be the only place I could buy empty watercolor pans, but uh, it's definitely been a few years and this was very much inspired by a lot of the comments you were leaving me and I guess we'll just get into it and see all the fun stuff inside. There really isn't that much, I think it is 95% paint and some brushes, this is definitely the tiny box of fun right there. So just that and some brushes, which I guess we'll start with the brushes since they're right here. But I believe these are just the Jackson's own brand um, synthetic brushes in a variety of sizes. I just, you know, was interested in trying them and it's a type of brush I use all of the time. So I wanted to see what theirs were like while I was making this order. Which just as a side note, if you are Canadian, they actually have free shipping to Canada over I want to say like 85, 90, 100, something around there, which is awesome. Not that their shipping is incredibly expensive anyway, because I was sort of playing around on their site because originally I was going to order, because the one good thing for me at least from Jackson's is they have a ton of products that they're basically the easiest and or only place that I can get them. Uh, and so originally I was going to order some pastel matte paper with this, but because it was like an oversized item, it like skyrocketed the shipping. So I did end up getting rid of that from my cart other than like I wasn't like thrilled to possibly be spending that much on paper. Um, but I heard so many good things from you all mentioning it, mentioning it in comments, so that's why I had originally checked it out. Um, but yeah, just wanted to mention that if you are like a non-US subscriber, not that they don't ship to the US too, but I know definitely for Canadians it can be interesting getting a hold of some of these products. So yes, those are the brushes that I picked up. I believe there's a size two. Why don't I just take these out honestly and we'll see what actually the sizes are. So they are the Jackson's brand Arctica Today white synthetic brushes in a size two, four, and eight. Not sure why I skipped out on a six there, but apparently I felt like I didn't need it. So that's what those brushes look like. I'm gonna zoom you in and we're gonna get into the actual fun section of this, which this is quite heavy considering its very small size but that's because it is just chock full of paint. Yes, this is a small box full to the brim of Roman small paints, which there's a bit of a story behind this. They just kept on being mentioned. Like I'd literally never heard of these paints until like a couple of months ago. And they kept on being brought up in the comment section of people either recommending them to me or asking if I would try them out and make a review on them. And finally, I just decided to look them up and see if I could one, even actually get them and two, where I could get them and Jackson's was the easiest place. And let me tell you, these things are actually incredibly reasonably priced. They are already in full pan size, which is nice. And I've never actually been able to get paints in pans already. Like just for me, it's been a lot easier to just buy the tubes, um, but I'm panning everything anyway. So them already being in pans is a nice change. But obviously like most watercolors, they are available in different series. But I think the most that one of these pans cost was like 720-ish Canadian, which incredibly reasonably priced for professional watercolors. There was like a lot of like $5 ones that I picked up. I basically just went through the swatch sheet that they had on the website, which super useful <laughs> and extremely appreciative and well organized. And so very much a fan of that. Um, but I basically just went through that and picked up the colors that looked interesting to me. I thought I would use. Um, so I think I have a pretty good mixture of color in here that can make up a pretty sweet um, condensed palette. Annoyingly, I think like I realized after I'm pretty sure there's 17 colors and it's like you idiot You should have bought an even amount um, But I'm probably gonna put these into a palette box later So I will probably show you when I do that, but let's actually get into the colors that I purchased 
Now I think this was the first one that I ended up adding to my cart and this is Mineral Violet and this reminded me a whole lot of Daniel Smith's Rose of Ultramarine. I'm 95% sure of what it's called but it's one of those really cool color splitting colors. It's like this purple and magenta-y color so I definitely wanted to try out a slight variant on that type of shade so had to pick that up other than I just go through this color constantly. I also picked up like these are absolutely not these are just in like Jackson's packaging order <laughs> not in any color order. This is Aquarius Green. This I think is another one of those color split colors but not a million percent sure I'm gonna be swatching these at some point. I am gonna do a whole review on these if you're interested in hearing my specific thoughts so I'm not sure how much is gonna be in this studio vlog and what might be in that video um, but I will try and make those videos back to back. We also have transparent oxide brown red ochre. I know, remember that I ended up picking up a lot of more neutral shades that I felt were somewhat missing from my Daniel Smith paints. Not that Daniel Smith doesn't make like a ton of paint colors, but there were just certain tones on neutrals that I found like I was missing out on in a pre-mixed version. So that's why there is somewhat of a disproportionate amount of neutral colors in this other than Generally, I'm one of those boring people that are doing portraits and use a ton of neutral colors all of the time. We also have Permanent Red, Lavenda. This is one of those more unique shades within this range. It's like a nice, more opaque periwinkle color, which don't see a lot in professional paint ranges, so wanted to pick one of those up. Continuing with the blue theme, we have Cobalt Blue. Indigo, which has hue in brackets, so I would assume there's possibly multiple versions of indigo, but indigo hue is the one that I chose. We have Cherry Quinacridone Red. Another blue, this one is Ocean Blue, which is a really nice dark teal turquoise color. Naples Yellow Deep. Might I just say, I am very into this packaging. It does appear like the outer casing on like obviously there's foil covering the full pan but this outer wrapping does appear to have actual paint swatched on it so very into this accurate color representation on the packaging. We have Naples yellow reddish again one of those colors that I'm really going to be using a lot in portrait work. We have transparent oxide yellow, Mars red, olive green deep permanent yellow, and lastly, neutral tint. So yeah, those are all of the Roman Small watercolors that I picked up, at least to begin with. I am definitely super interested in testing this brand out and would definitely be up to buying more, but I think I'm gonna open all of these up and actually put them in one of my palette boxes because something I don't think I ever showed or mentioned is I kind of accidentally, like obviously you've seen that I end up with all of the prototypes for the palette boxes that I make um, and just any modifications, but what you did not see was I accidentally ended up with a painted lid for myself. Now this was like part of the first wave of palette tower lids and I fully intended on making this, like I had a ton of paint left over so I just grabbed Technically, I think this was one of my prototype lids, but it was like, I looked it over, it was completely fine. And for some reason I had a couple of prototypes anyway, just in case I need it for like weight um, measurements or any of that kind of stuff for shipping. So I always want some like plain ones just in case. Um, but this one looked fine. So I ended up grabbing it to paint it, fully intending on selling this one for a sixth palette to be available. But I forgot to tape up the bottom like an idiot. Um, so this this is a lot better than what it did look like. I possibly could have gotten it um, cleaner um, and retaped it before I resined it, but at that point it's like, screw it, this one's just going to be mine. So here's my uh, palette lid that I accidentally made myself. Really into it, definitely made sure that that color scheme was brand on point um, and added some different shimmers in that as well. So I have this medium lid. These will fit in a medium box, so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and actually build myself a palette box.
So here is my finished palette. I ended up actually putting these into one of the towers, even though right now I don't have any of my other paints in these towers. I feel like I might actually switch over my main watercolor palette to them just because I do really <laughs> like these products and it would save definitely a lot of space on my desk and it would also mean that I would be more likely to use um, these watercolors definitely in particular in conjunction with those ones more if they were just all in the stackable tower idea I could just you know unstack however many layers I wanted to use and which types of paints I wanted to use for that painting so that is what that looks like. Definitely not the most exciting or colorful watercolor palette ever. My main one's definitely a lot more visually appealing looking, but these are the colors I decided to start out with. So I think that's going to be where I leave it for these paints for this video, just because I am planning on doing an entire review and I don't want to be like repeating myself um, with different information and just opinions on them or whatever. But yeah, just wanted to show you the process of putting that together and also what actual specific colors I decided to pick up. I have absolutely no segue for this part of the studio vlog, but I'd been getting quite a few comments and messages asking about the possibility of more accessory types of products to go along with the palette towers, which I'm definitely still looking at. But a more specific thing that I had people asking about was the idea of some sort of insert or divider for the palette towers for those that didn't already have or want all of their paint in individual pans. Now I know the concept of paint pan storage was essentially how this entire product came to be, but I also like the idea of designing some sort of insert that would open this product up to the possibility of a whole other group of people. So I decided to sit down for a couple of hours and figure out a design for some sort of paint storage insert. Now because these towers were so specifically designed to fit paint pans, I wanted to go along with that similar idea. So I used the base measurements of the full paint pan for this particular insert that I'm working on here, meticulously measured all of those out and then divided the insert section area into even rectangles so that it was split into 20 full pan-like areas. So pretty much mimicking the idea of the full pan, but instead having all 20 pans on one single piece of plastic. But I know full pans aren't everyone's cup of tea, so I also wanted to design something that mimicked the idea of half pans. So same overall dimension and idea of the full pan insert, it's just this time it's split into 36 sections. So here are the two digital designs for the two possible paint inserts, which I then went ahead and 3D printed to test them out. So here are the finished printed prototypes of the palette inserts. They turned out awesome, perfectly, like these could very easily be sellable, although I'm going to need them for uh, pictures for my website and stuff. So as you can see, I did do two of them, one to basically mimic full pans and the other to mimic half pans. So 20 wells and 36 wells. And these just, I'm gonna grab a palette tower insert or just layer here. Um, so these just really nicely fit into the tower layers uh, pretty perfectly. Like as you can see, it's a really nice secure fit. Um, you can very easily remove them. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that with one hand. So yeah, that's for if you aren't into the idea of individual pans or maybe you don't have them and were interested in something more along the lines of this for your paint storage. So by the time this video goes up, these should also be available in my store if you would like to add one to your palette tower order. Also because I've been poured painting so much, I've had to massively restock on paint because I'm just flying through it, which uh, has not been easy. I normally get this Michael stuff and they've basically been sold out everywhere. So I ended up ordering this 36 set because there are obviously particular colors that I'm constantly using and running out of and I just physically can't get them other than I'm going through so much of it. Having this larger color selection is really nice. So I ended up ordering 
I also ended up picking up this slightly smaller set in store and one of these because I'm constantly going through those particular colors. So hopefully this paint will last me for a decent while depending on what I'm getting up to pour paint wise. I've also been of course blowing it through pouring medium so I literally had to buy the most massive one I think Liquitex creates. It is a gallon I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah never thought I would be buying this much at pouring medium but here we are. I also had to order a gallon of resin. Honestly it's just because I'm going through it so fast it's much uh, it just makes more sense if I'm buying it in larger quantities. It is does end up being cheaper obviously if you were not like producing this level of stuff you probably wouldn't want to be spending that much on pouring medium or resin in one shot but it is working out to be a nice deal so I'll just be emptying this out into the smaller bottles that I'm normally using as you can see. This I opened last week, the week before, definitely not that long ago, and I really do not have that much left. So I guess there's my super short supply restock haul, I don't know.
So here are the multitude of different types of palettes that are now completely finished and resined and put together. All of these will be available right now in my store if you are interested in picking one of them up. And that's going to be it for this week's studio vlog. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in my next video.